Welcome to OS Summary in 5 Minutes. In this video, we will cover part 1 which talks about the intro of OS as well as the system structures. So what is OS? OS is a program that is an intermediary between the hardware and the computer user. So it consists of two modes, which are the user as well as the kernel mode. So the user mode is for normal applications such as opening a text editor, while kernel mode is for privileged instructions such as executing system calls. So OS consists of the kernel, which is a program that is always running. So the OS is also usually classified as a layer approach. So the lowest layer, so the lowest layer, which is layer zero, is the hardware, or the highest layer is the user interface. So each layer is built on top of the lower layer. So the rules of OS are basically resource allocation and control program. So resource allocation is to allow for fair and efficient resource use while control program is to prevent errors and improper use of computers. So goals of OS is to execute user programs, make computer systems convenient to use, as well as utilize computer hardware efficiently. So here's the memory hierarchy. So higher up in the memory hierarchy, there's increased speed. So registers has the highest speed, but it will cost a lot more than those lower down in the hierarchy and it also has the lowest storage size as it is the costliest. So it also is intended for short term storage. So to maintain cache coherency for single processor we will use the most recent value which is the value at the highest hierarchy. And for multiple processor, we'll use, we'll need to update or invalidate values in other cache since multiprocessor has uh, multiple caches. So for, so the difference between program and process is that program is a passive entity while process is an active entity. And they differ in terms of memory location. So program will be stored in the secondary memory such as SSD or HDD. So process will be stored in the main memory, which is a RAM. And process is a program in execution. So it has process control block, which stores the information for each process. And it also has the address space, which contains the code and data as well as the dynamic memory allocations. So for OS, typically it is implemented by being interrupt driven. So for example, you press Ctrl C, it will terminate the current process. So the advantages of it is that lesser time will be spent waiting on input or output devices and signals will be sent when input or output devices are received or completed. So it is able to maximize CPU utilization since CPU is not idle and is doing meaningful work at all times. So when, it, so when an interrupt occurs, it will halt the current process, save the process state by pushing the program counter and the status register to the stack. It will load the interrupt service routine and will finish the execution of the interrupt service routine. Next, it will resume the process state by pulling back the process counter and status register from the stack. So the difference between emulation and virtualization are that even though both, both imitate the hardware, emulation will allow you to use the hardware and software on top of the whole system. Meanwhile, virtualization will only mimic parts of the hardware while allowing you to run a guest OS on top of the host architecture. So this is the diagram for virtualization. So diagram A represents a typical computer structure without virtualization, while program B is the one after virtualization. So on top of the underlying hardware, there's a machine manager, which will 
allocate a kernel as well as uh, processes to each VM so each VM is independent of one another. That's five minutes. See you in the next video.